Hello and welcome to another episode of Health Matters at the Dr. Sashiba Foundation, where everything woman is our concern. I'm your host, Claudette, and today we're diving into a crucial topic, women's health. Did you know that many women's health issues often go unnoticed or untreated? That's why we're here to shed light on these important matters. Did you know that over 60% of women over 40 experience regular sleep disturbances? That's right. More than half of us, more than half of women in this age group struggle to get a good night's rest. Hello, everyone. I'm Claudette Esterin Campbell, and today we're going to get right into a topic that affects millions, sleep challenges for women over 40. So if you're in this age group, or know somebody who is, this video is for you and for them. We'll explore why sleep becomes tricky, what's behind these issues, and most importantly, how to improve your sleep quality. So mm. let's get started to better sleep. <gasps> okay. First, let's talk about why sleep is such a big deal for women over 40. As we age, our sleep patterns naturally change. But for women, there's an extra layer of complexity. Hormonal shifts, and we have done a video about hormonal imbalances, so go watch that. But hormonal shifts, particularly during perimenopause and menopause, can wreak havoc on sleep. These changes can include night sweats, mood swings, and increased anxiety all enemies of good sleep. But it's not just hormones at play. Let's look at some common sleep problems women over 40 face. Insomnia is a big one. Trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. And I, I struggle with that. Many women find themselves wide awake at 3 a.m., mind racing with thoughts. Then there's sleep apnea, which becomes more common as we age. And let's not forget about restless leg syndrome, another sleep disturber. See, these issues don't just affect nighttime, they spill over into daytime too. Fatigue, irritability, difficulty concentrating, these are all consequences of poor sleep. I've asked my friends about this and they all can relate. Uh, one friend, Clara, who is a director of the Dr. Sashiba Foundation, who prefers her age not to be disclosed, but I can safely say she's over 40. Clara is a professional and I asked her about this topic and for days I've been waiting for her to send me a response and here is what she sent. Current situation, see, think I'm going crazy. I've not even had my breakfast yet, sleep, bed turnover. I mean, cover up same way. I have to go through all of these documents. It's crazy. Really, really, this is maddening. Sleep affects you even being able to focus on your work. So what's causing all of these sleep problems? Well, it's not just one thing. It's a combination of factors. Stress is a major culprit. Work pressure for right. Clara. Family responsibility and caring for aging parents. It all adds up. Can you identify with any of this? Lifestyle choices too play a role. That evening glass of wine might help you relax, but it can disrupt your sleep. Earlier this year, I had a conversation with Dr. Amanda Atkins, and she specializes in what's called lifestyle medicine. Here's what she had to say about her practice of medicine and its six pillars. Listen to what's one of the Tell six. Tell us about the, um, the lifestyle bit. How... how how did that come about? Why, why, you know, because I'm sure when you were in med school and you were, you were deciding what to do and you decided, okay, internal medicine is going to be my focus, you know, and then 
2020 came along or sometime thereabouts and you decided to be board certified as a lifestyle in lifestyle medicine. What does lifestyle medicine mean? And why, why did that come about? It's a relatively newer specialty. I believe 2014 is when they um, first started doing board certifications. Um, I actually finished my residency in 2009. Um, mm -hmm. So lifestyle medicine focuses on when, um, things of lifestyle that you can change and um, you can still prescribe medication being with lifestyle medicine, but we try to limit that and really focus on the six pillars of lifestyle. So number one would be plant-based nutrition, which is why I'm plant-based. Um, then it's exercise or movement, sleep, stress reduction, social connections, and reducing uh, tox toxic substances such as tobacco and alcohol. So we focus on those six things, which if we look at it, that's, you know, everyone, you know, has those things, uh, except maybe not everyone drinks alcohol or smokes um, tobacco. Sleep. Dr. Atkins also spoke about heart disease and how lack of sleep sometimes can be a mask for heart problems. Take a listen. Well, I would say African-American women um, are more likely to die from heart disease. Is, uh, Is that not because of poor medical care? So access to health care could be definitely uh, linked to that. And but even if they do come to um, get checked out, their uh, symptoms can be kind of brushed over more likely. So um, any woman of color, we usually tell them to really push and really, you know, if you feel like you're not being heard, then you need to actually find a different doctor that can actually listen to you and actually listen to your symptoms because women do not have the traditional symptoms of like a heart attack that a man would have. So it can be simply as, oh, I just feel more tired, which is something that we uh, almost hate to hear in internal medicine. Um, someone comes in saying they just feel tired because it can be, you know, a whole slew of things that can cause you to feel tired. But that could be a sign of heart disease for some women and I mean, especially black women. So you would have to, you know, try to really dig deep into saying, OK, when do you feel tired? Why do you feel tired? What are the other things that are going on? But now, let's talk about those screens, our phones, our tablets, television. They all emit a blue light that can mess up our sleep cycle. Health conditions are another factor to consider. Thyroid issues, which are more common in women over 40, that can also affect your sleep. Chronic pain conditions, like arthritis, can make it hard to get a comfortable night. Let's not forget about medications. Some can interfere with sleep as a side effect. Now, the part that you've been waiting for, <laughs> how to improve your sleep. First, let's talk about creating a sleep-friendly environment. Your bedroom should be cool, dark, and quiet, not bright like right now where I am. Invest in comfortable bedding and pillows. Consider using blackout curtains or a white noise machine if needed. Next, establish a consistent sleep schedule. Try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day even on the weekends. This helps to regulate your body's internal clock. A relaxing bedtime routine. This in could include reading a book, taking a warm bath, or doing some gentle stretches. The key is to signal to your body, hey, it's time to wind down. <laughs> and watch what you eat and drink, especially in the evening. Avoid caffeine later today and limit alcohol consumption. A light snack before bed can be okay, but avoid heavy meals close to bedtime. Regular exercise can greatly improve sleep quality. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days. But be careful about timing. Exercising too close to bedtime can be stimulating. And manage stress through relaxation techniques. Try deep breathing exercises, meditation, or yoga. Many women also find journaling before bed helps to clear their minds. If hormonal changes are causing night sweats, consider these tips. Keep a glass of water and a small towel by your bed. 
Wear moisture wicking pajamas and use breathable bedding. Some women find relief with herbal remedies like black cohosh, but always consult your doctor first. Speaking of doctors, don't hesitate to talk with them. And if your sleep problems persist, talk to your primary health care provider. They can rule out underlying health issues like Dr. Ad Atkins said and suggest treatments if needed. Remember, improving your sleep might take time and patience. What works for one person might not work for another. So we've covered a lot today and I'm tired. <laughs> we've covered a lot about sleep challenges for women over 40. From understanding the causes to exploring solutions, I hope you found some helpful insights. Good sleep is crucial for all of us overall health and well-being, especially us women over 40. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others who might benefit. Do you have any sleep tips that work for you? Share them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more health and wellness content. Here's to better nights and brighter days. Sleep well, everyone. I'm off to my bed. Bye.